Welcome, this is a DaVinci Resolve tutorial for how to set up scopes using the internal ones that are included with DaVinci Resolve. I believe the lesson that you're about to get applies to both the studio version as well as the free version of DaVinci Resolve. For the longest time I used external scopes because I couldn't get what I needed. Um, but now, since version 17, you're going to see the functionality that allows me to give me everything that I need. And there's uh, other great benefits too. So starting from scratch, if I reset the layout, this is exactly the way it comes up. Um, so the scopes are going to come up the way it should on yours. If you, even if you've never set your scopes up, here's what it's going to look like. I'll turn on my scope. And here is a basic parade. Now, if I would like to see the blacks for these selected screenshots from uh, famous media, such as Inception, Rogue One, Rogue One, Tree of Life, Vanilla Sky, a music video called Stacy's Mom, and Steven Spielberg's Sugarland Express. If I would like to see the blacks and how the colorists had set them up, it's very difficult to see it this far out, this zoomed out. The scope is simply too small. And so I preferred to zoom in on these, and I used to be able to do that in DaVinci Resolve, and then they took away the ability, and now when you zoom in, it gets cut off. So that isn't helpful at all. So then since version 17, there's a way around it. So let me show you that right now. If I expand the scopes out, it comes up and it defaults to four. You'll notice that nine scopes, you have one scope, two scope, four windows, and nine windows. And nine is grayed out because this window is too small. So if I simply expand it out, nine becomes available and now I have nine scopes at my disposal. So I'm going to make this as small as it can possibly be and shove it into the corner for this lesson. So for now, to get zoomed in blacks, I make parade, parade, parade. I like to leave this as a regular vector scope. I like to leave this as a normal parade. I will make this another vector scope and then make all along the bottom vector scopes, vector scope and vector scope. Starting at the top, holding down Option for a Mac or Alt for a PC, I can, using a three-button mouse, zoom in using the wheel and get it to fill the image and holding down the wheel to use it as a button so I can drag it around. I'm going to zoom in on it and get it to fill left to right and then have the baseline sitting there at the bottom. Rinse, repeat for green and blue. So now I can see my blacks zoomed in for the red channel, green channel, and blue channel. I no longer have to try to squint and see it you know, in this zoomed out scope. I can really see the detail. And now when I move from still to still, I can really see how the blacks are set up in this shot from Inception, this shot from Rogue One, this other shot from Rogue One, this from Tree of Life, Vanilla Sky, Stacy's Mom, and Sugarland Express. So that's how I get zoomed in blacks on DaVinci Resolve internal scopes. Now thanks to Mark Wheelage, I can show you something that I recently learned how to do within the last two years. This is a typical vector scope zoomed out and I can now see it's set to all. This is the uh, default values. What I'm looking at here as I move from still to still is I'm seeing darks, mids, and brights all crammed together. And that's the way I've colored, you know, for the last 20 years of my career. It's only in the last two years of my career that I learned that there's a better way. So now I can break out the darks, mids, and brights by coming down to the vector scopes and setting this to the lows setting this one to mids and setting this one to high. These values can be set to your personal taste. And so I like to zoom in on these. So holding down option or alt, I get better detail. So now as I move around these stills, I can really see how the levels are showing up chromatically in the darks, the mids and the brights. I'm no longer forced to see all three levels crammed together into one. I personally like to have one scope completely zoomed out, just like this parade is completely bird's eye view zoomed out, and then I'll have another scope zoomed in so I can see finer detail. So this is everything, darks, mids, and brights.
Now, the value in having this particular kind of setup means I no longer have to bring my own scopes with me in some kind of portable fashion, or if I work in a room that doesn't have the scopes that I need. Now, if, as long as it's DaVinci Resolve, it has the scopes that I need. I can create what you just saw in less than 10 minutes. I can have the scopes that I'm used to using. Whether it's SDR scopes, HDR scopes, these scopes will give me everything that I need. And this is how I set it up. I will then save it as a preset. And I can take this from room to room. Um, I can put it on a thumb drive. I can keep it with me. Or I can, of course, email it. If, uh, on the other hand, I'm on an isolated system that doesn't give me the ability to bring my own files, I can recreate it myself. The only negative with having this scope set up I mean, you can't, I wouldn't recommend working this way, there's just not enough real estate. So I like to have this fill up a monitor. And then I can really see all my detail nice and easy. I'm not squinting for anything. So I end up dragging this over to my second monitor. A lot of colorists like to use that second monitor for dual screen mode. I absolutely understand it, and I sympathize. I prefer to use it for my scopes. So if you are one of those colorists who prefers to use your second monitor for dual screen mode, this isn't going to be helpful to you. But for the rest of us, I now have scopes exactly the way I need them on any DaVinci Resolve system anywhere. And it's pretty easy and fast to do. Now that I've shown you how to set up scopes raw, let me bring up my scopes. So if I load mine, which is going to be on my spare monitor, I will drag it over here and show you that I have my values set at 0.3 and 0.7 for the lows, 0 0.3, 0 0.7 for the mids, and 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for the high range. That's what works for me. Maybe you'll find something that works better for you. This is how I do my scopes in DaVinci Resolve. I do this when I work at studios. I do this when I work in my home system. And after years of struggling with other kinds of scope solutions, I find that this is the easiest way to give me everything that I need in any room that has DaVinci Resolve. Hope this was helpful and good luck.